So can, can you please uh, introduce yourself and the organisation you work for? Kia ora, my name is Tracy Portiki and I work for an organisation called Te Rau Ora and we're an Indigenous Māori health and wellbeing organisation. Kia ora. Uh, I'm Ross Bell, I'm the Executive Director of the New Zealand Drug Foundation, so we're um, sort of the country's leading drug policy organisation. Uh, and I need to say that uh, this is the first time that New Zealand, Tracy is on the government delegation to the CND is the first time they've had an indigenous person on the delegation so it's her first time here as you know and is also the first time New Zealand government's had a uh, indigenous person on the on the on the get delegations that's very cool oh, thanks, Ross. Yeah. congratulations uh, so uh, there are very exciting developments uh, in terms of cannabis policy in in New Zealand uh, can you explain us uh, what is happening and uh, or everything about the referendum. One of the big questions for New Zealand is, can, when you've seen some of the cannabis regulation that's happened in North America, will First Nations people and marginalised communities benefit from legalisation? So I'll, I'll get Tracy to cover that off. But in terms of what's happening, the government has proposed uh, a public referendum, uh, which is going to happen on the 19th of September this year. Uh, and it, that referendum will ask the New Zealand public, do you support cannabis legalisation or not? Uh, and in terms of the, the detail of how that will work, uh, the government is drafting uh, a bill. Some of the details of that, that bill and what the potential model of regulation will be is, is now public. Uh, for example, they're setting a purchase age of 20, they're not allowing advertising, there'll be tax and that tax money will be reinvested back into you know, cannabis harm reduction. Uh, we don't yet know how the model will work in terms of is it going to be commercial or is it going to be more non-profit, uh, but before the vote happens the public will get all of the details about what is being proposed and they get to choose, should New Zealand legalise cannabis? <laughs> At the moment, um, we have uh, we have no regulation, and no regulation for Indigenous people in New Zealand means um, getting arrested and put into prisons. And we um, are well overrepresented in um, in all of those negative spaces. Um, so, 50% of the population who are currently incarcerated. Uh, Māori, and we make up only 15% of the population. So we have some big issues, and um, and for us it's an opportunity for a change. Um, and yes, we are concerned about the lack of um, communication and consultation um, with our communities about what um, the potential legislation might look like and how it will um, impact on us yeah, so it's sort of, yeah, w we need to change things um, and we want to have a say in what that change looks like. So we're calling on our government to um, to be a good treaty partner and we have a treaty with them and, and they have an, a constitutional obligation to have a discussion with us. How would uh, ideal uh, regulation look like? From a principle you know, the, the values that the government's approaching this at, uh, I think, um, gives us greater confidence that we're not going to end up with a, 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 for, a, a super for-profit, overly commercialised market. Yep. So the government has said it wants to, just like Canada did, you know, it wants to protect young people uh, and it wants to move the organised crime away from, from the market. And some of the proposals that have already come out um, give us confidence that, that it can, can do that. I also, look, I also believe that even, even if we did regulation badly, it's better than, what, than, what, we've we're, than what we've currently got. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so I think that there's enough out there for the public to be confident that the government's moving down the right track, that they're not designing a bill that's going to be super commercial. Uh, but there are still questions about who's going to benefit economically from, from the market. And we don't know that yet. The... The details around the, so there will be a licensing scheme 
you know, a license to cultivate and a license to sell and, and, and everything in between. But we don't know yet whether there will be a percentage of those licenses given to Māori. Um, you know, we, we don't know whether there will be a cap on, you know, the number of licenses a company can hold. So that, that's probably, in terms of a timeline, all of those details will probably come out in about April. Um, the whole campaign, you know, trying to convince the public to vote for this thing will run from about June uh, and then the election itself is in September. Uh, yeah, look, there's a, in terms of how New Zealand has undertaken this, it's had three years to engage with the public. It hasn't done that that well. Everything is actually getting jammed into the, the final few months. Um, uh, yeah, and, and you know, uh, at the, the, the vote happens at the same time as we vote for what government we want. And to complicate matters even further, there's a second referendum that voters will be asked to vote on, which was around euthanasia. So, complicated. Is there a strong opposition to the referendum? And if, if yes, where is it coming from? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, there's a strong organised opposition. Um, and it's currently coming from... Uh, socially conservative, uh, there's a, sp a specific organisation that is a, a, a conservative Christian organisation um, who, who oppose everything, who are anti-marriage equality, who, who um, are currently right now fighting the government around uh, changes to our abortion law, um, that they, they are against the euthanasia referendum. Uh, so they are actually quite a fringe group. Um, and, and, some, and they're very well connected. Um, they're receiving finance you know, from, from a conservative groups in, a, in, in America. A lot of their messaging on cannabis yep. um, is taken directly from um, anti-cannabis or anti-reform groups in, in America. Mm -hmm. So they have quite a um, coordinated uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. The thing for me is that when you look at their messages and when you put their messages before reasonable people, they're not credible. You know, it doesn't stack up. Most, mm. most people know that prohibition isn't working and that we have to do something different. So the kind of really moralistic arguments that they're using, I don't think are going to work. Uh, in my country, we have an ethnic minority called the Roma people and it's like 7% of the population. and. Um, uh, they are very much affected by the use of synthetic cannabinoids um, and uh, synthetic cannabinoid use is rampant and it has some devastating effects on, on these socially excluded, marginalized communities. Is there something similar going on in New Zealand with Maori people? Um, yes, definitely. So um, our communities are, are more impacted in every in every area, including poorer health comes, um, lower employment rates, um, poverty, and so on. Um, yeah, so any any movement away from, um, you know, and, and, and really we've, we've operated in a system that's been very discriminatory. Um, so, you know, the hope with an opportunity to have a vote at the September referendum um, around cannabis as an opportunity to, to just slow things down, just stop things just a little wee bit in our communities. So it's important. Can I touch on, I mean, because I saw the work that you had done uh, on synthetic cannabis, cannabinoid um, impacts um, in, in your country, and it's identical. Mm. We, we two, two years ago, we were having people dying uh, from the use of, of synthetic cannabinoids. And uh, that the government of the day was saying, oh, they, should, they shouldn't use these things. But when you scratch the surface, the majority of people who were dying were Māori, homeless, unemployed, uh, you know, poverty, mm. homelessness, they're the drivers of, of, of this. Mm. Uh, you know, the, the question whether legalising cannabis um, will mean that there's a safer alternative. I think is is a is a genuine um, issue for us. It, you know, it, it could well be that um, providing people a safer drug like cannabis will reduce the harm from these other ones. 
Ross, if there is one lesson we learned from the Canadian example is that it's it's not so easy to, to beat the black market. I mean, it's uh, it's still resistant. So do you expect uh, the same in New Zealand or can you make some precautions to avoid those mistakes which they made? Yeah, I, 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 yes, it's good that someone like Canada has, has gone before us to, to, and we can learn from those mistakes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, so it depends on how it all works. It depends on if you are going to do the tax, is it, where do you set that tax? Is it going to be so high that people will stay you know, on, on the black market? I, I just think the lesson from Canada is implementation was, was done badly. You know, the, their biggest populated province, Ontario, did not have retail stores on, on, on day one. So yeah, it's going to take, you're going to make mistakes. Um, they've made some, you know, guaranteed that New Zealand will, will make some as well. But even if you look at what's happened in Canada, just in the, you know, it, they've only had legalisation for just over a year. Um, they are unpicking 50 or 60 years of, of prohibition. So we can't expect, you know, that, that within, within the first two years you're going to eliminate the black market. Um, so I think we need to be realistic about you know, what's going to happen. I think, you know, there's been a huge shift away from the black market and it, while it's not the majority in Canada, you know, there has been a big shift. Billions of dollars is, is now being, you know, spent on cannabis in the legal market. So you're taking that money away from, from you know, organised crime. So, yeah, but we can, hopefully we won't make the same kind of mistakes um, that they did. I think I asked everything I wanted, but if you have anything, any other things to share... One one question we are getting uh, asked a lot uh, is is are we going to win? <laughs> you know what are the what are the polls showing? And and at the moment the the, the race is tight. Um, we, we're you know in partnership we're running the the yes campaign. So we've chosen to to put our effort into to winning the referendum. Everything is tight. It's 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 um, all, almost evenly split. There is a big group, probably about twenty percent of the public, who aren't who haven't yet decided. Uh, but who I think are persuadable. Uh, once they get to learn more about what the government has proposed, um, the work, the focus groups that we've run, the research we've run, is once people have, once undecided voters get that information, they only move one way, they move towards yes. So it's close, I'm quietly confident. <laughs>